And when coming to uh, subjectivity, it is not a subject who is the sovereign precondition of action and thought. We usually say that cow eats grass, which means cow is the subject, uh, uh, and he is doing the subject, or it is doing the sub. It is doing the action. I'm sorry, it is doing the action, and uh, it is thinking. So it is not a subject who is the sovereign precondition of action and thought. It is a socially produced agent and deliberator whose agency and thought is made possible by a language that precedes that I. So what uh, Butler says is that the subject itself is not the precondition for an action. It is just an agent. The subject is just an agent or a deliberator of an action based on certain other preconditions and that precondition is the power. So power determines who is the subject. Is it right? Power determines who is the subject or who should do what is determined by the power system in which we live. It can be the cultural power system. It can be the governmental mechanism. It can be the religious institutions. It can be the scientific advancements or it can be even scientific, uh, scientific uh, uh, developments can also be a power system. Because we are forced to be part of it. Okay. And then the subject is not a precondition of politics, but a differential effect of power. So in that case, we can say that subject is not a precondition, but it is an effect of the power, which is the precondition. And gender also determines the subjectivity. As we have already seen, since we are uh, uh, situated within the subject, the identity of subject is mainly based on the gender and sexual norms. Our subjectivity is determined based on, based on that. Even when we walk outside our house, we are conscious, I am a woman or I am a boy, so I should be like this, I can be like this. So gender is playing an important role in determining our subjectivity. Again, we are continuing our discussion on performativity and precarity. And the element of power asks, why some forms of sexual life are so much more possible than others and why some seem to embody the unthinkable and even the unlivable. So why can't we be a gay? Why can't we be a lesbian? Why can't we be a transgender? Why it becomes unlivable? You, you have seen, a, uh, seen an advertisement uh, uh, in, in television, Red Label. I think it is the uh, advertisement of Red Label. If, if I'm not right, uh, excuse me. Uh, so uh, this is uh, in that particular advertisement, as you have already seen, uh, 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 a transgender woman is coming and providing tea to the uh, uh, to to a uh, to a mother who is sitting in the vehicle, and the mother says, "I don't want it. You go away." And she says, "No, I am not coming to uh, uh, coming for uh, uh, money uh, uh, because there is a general assumption that the transgenders live by begging, taking by taking arms, so they will be disturbing us uh, uh, to get money." So so the, the elderly lady was trying to. Uh, drive her away but she says that I am not such a person I am earning my uh, uh, or I am living uh, uh, my life uh, uh, I have set up a tea stall uh, I am not coming to beg anything and I would like to give tea for everyone uh, and today it is free of cost because I am so happy about having an earning or having a livelihood uh, so the, and, and the woman is accepting it and she is blessing the uh, girl and all uh, uh, that transgender woman. So this is the adult expense. So uh, 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 there, what happens is that uh, uh, we are craving for recognition. In the first part of that advertisement, that woman is not recognized because she is differentiated or she is having a different sexual identity. That's why she is not accepted by that elderly woman. But later on, we can see the change that is happening in her mind. That is acceptance. Acceptance happens towards the end of that advertisement. So the performativity of gender is thus bound up with differential ways in which, which uh, subject becomes eligible for recognition. Uh, uh, so in the final part, we can see that that woman is exercising her uh, uh, or, or she is trying to uh, 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 be part of the society. She is trying to perform her uh, gender as a woman rather than a transgender. Uh, uh, she is uh, clad in a sari, she is completely dressed up as a woman. So she is trying to uh, be part of the uh, society to get recognition. Uh, but what is uh, uh, peculiar about that advertisement is that there is a general uh, disregard for the transgenders. A number of gender and sexual norms 
condition in advance who will count as a subject and who will not and on the basis of this question who count as a subject and who does not that uh, performativity becomes linked with precarity and we have already seen that this is actually there are there are a few sentences which are being repeated in this particular slide so uh, 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 so uh, we'll continue to the next slide now uh, butler talks about an incident that happened in los angeles so that is the next uh, major uh, discussion in the essay so uh, uh, you keep this in mind precarity is concerned with performance because we always wanted to be included in our society or we require recognition in order to survive so uh, in order to receive that uh, uh, recognition what we do is we perform our subjectivity okay we are not living within what we are or we are not exercising our identity as it is but instead we are trying to uh, uh, get in, get included or we try to get included and we do certain actions or we do perform our gender or we do perform our identity in order to get recognized this is what usually happens but there are also instances when certain performances will result in inclusion uh, or certain performances will uh, will be a kind of protest against the non inclusion so that is explained with the case of the los angels story so what happens in that let's see she is talking about the uh, singing of national anthem uh, by the excluded group uh, uh, or excluded uh, spanish community in uh, los angeles and uh, uh, they were the legal migrants uh, got united in los angeles and they started singing the national anthem uh, mm, uh, so they were singing it, uh, singing it in spanish so it was a kind of assertion of the rights of the citizens but what what is uh, uh, peculiar about this incident is that uh, these people are not citizens okay so uh, 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 the uh, there is a one second okay so it was in 2006 okay uh, so the illegal immigrants uh, got united in the streets in Los Angeles and they started to sing the national anthem uh, of uh, the United States and they sang, sang the anthem uh, in English and also in Spanish and a Spanish version was widely circulated on the web and they also sang the national anthem of Mexico and sometimes they would sing one anthem right after the other and what kind of public performance was this street singing so that is the question what is it? this is a performance actually this is a public performance and their aim was to petition the government to allow them to become citizens but what was the way in which they made their petition so it was a petition or it was a plea towards the government to include them also as citizens but it is not uh, a written petition or it is not a kind of a request uh, written request uh, to the government instead it was a performative request or it was a performative exercise and they were exercising the right of free assembly without having that right that is ironical they don't have the right to assemble but they are they are assembling and that right belongs to citizens only so they were asserting a right that they did not have in order to make the case publicly and they should have that very right but obviously they did not need to have the right in order to make a case that they should have the right luckily they were not arrested but they could have been so since it was not a protest movement they were just singing the song so they were not arrested so the performance was an attempt to get included so they were talking about their rights And for the most part, illegal immigrants stay away from any situation in which they might be caught, imprisoned and deported. But in this instance, they made themselves very public, exercising a right that belongs to citizens and precisely because they do not have the right. So the, this is an important point. They don't have the right to assemble, but they uh, perform that right of the citizens in order to become citizens or in order to get them recognized. So they assemble themselves in the public. And there were so many battles in the state of California and also elsewhere in the uh, in the other parts of United the United States. 
regarding the english only policies okay uh, so uh, they were fearful about how spanish is already spoken and also uh, about other languages which were spoken in california uh, so there is always this craving for the uh, uh, inclusion okay so this is the case of uh, california uh, i'm sorry it is this is the case of los angeles so the singing exposes and opposes those modes of exclusion through which the nation imagines and reinforces its own unity so it it exposes and also opposes because they were not supposed to unite together it was only the right of the citizen but amidst that they joined together and they opposed the, the kind of uh, policies uh, uh, the non inclusive policies towards the immigrants and um, uh, they opposed uh, the mode of exclusion uh, through which nation imagines and enforces its own unity and the singing also exposes and uh, 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 i'm sorry the singing uh, is a kind of protest it is a kind of performance